got some exciting things to share. Obviously, everything, uh-oh, made a mistake there, so bear with me. Everything centered around our four pillars. And for those of you that are also visiting with us, if this is uh, your first time with us or um, you're not yet a uh, uh, a member with us here at Billion Dollar Mind, I want to welcome you to our Sunday night uh, Zoom. All right. So we have three Zooms each week. Uh, Sunday night, we focus on the four pillars of faith. That's going to be our focal point tonight. Uh, we go uh, do we do a deep dive into these uh, four pillars so that we can begin to apply these universal laws uh, to our lives uh, and begin to reap the benefits of what applying universal laws uh, mean to our lives? Uh, so um, Billion Dollar Mind is a very innovative uh, platform uh, combining uh, the sharing of these four pillars. Uh, and as we begin to uh, apply them to our lives, starting to see true transformation. We'll begin to talk about uh, that on this evening. Uh, there's also a phenomenal uh, income opportunity as well. We won't really talk about that much tonight. I will give you a couple of links for those of you that may be visiting with us and you want to uh, say, hey, you know, one area of transformation for me is, you know, my money. You know, my my money's a, a, it's a comedian. It's, it's been funny. Okay. Well, we want to make sure that your money is not a comedian anymore. Okay. Uh, and get that taken care of. So we'll give you some content tonight that you can begin uh, uh, to get more information about the income side of what we do. Tonight is going to be our faith-based uh, sharing. And so what are these four pillars of faith? Um John, who you heard just a few moments ago and who may very well um, uh, grace us and bless us with chiming in, uh, number one is gratitude, great attitude. And we're going to circle back to this a little bit tonight. We're going to have a, another special guest uh, um, tonight that is going to talk about the power of gratitude or great attitude. Number two, in terms of the pillars of faith, is vision. This is where we get to architect our lives. Now, I, I will not speak for any of you, your big boys and your big girls. I'll only speak for me. Uh, up until, up until I'll start to say maybe two to three years ago, um, and really over these past few months since I've been connected with John, um, where I've really begun to say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been allowing circumstances to be the architect of my life. I've allowed situations, circumstances, I've pointed the finger at him. No, it's her fault. No, it's their fault. And in doing so, I have given all my power away, no more. Vision is where we get to architect our lives. What is it, who is it that we want to be? What is it that we want to become? What are the, uh, um, uh, how do we want to leave our footprints in the sands of time? And yes, there's a financial element to that as well, but it's not just a financial uh, element. And so writing the vision, making it plain. So we've been talking about vision. We'll talk a little bit more about that on tonight and what I refer to as an I am statement or vision statement. Number three, and um, this has been really a missing ingredient. This has been a huge missing piece of the puzzle um, that John is really bringing to the forefront. You know, I, for years and years and years, I had a vision board. For years and years and years, I even uh, uh, read my affirmations. But what John has really brought to light is the importance of taking time daily and to really sit in the feeling of what it will be like when our vision is attained, when we've hit that target, when we've met that goal, what will that feel like? And again, you'll hear from our special guest on tonight um, uh, a little more about that. And depending on where I our time is, uh, we'll even go in and we'll do a guided meditation. And I'm going to tell you what this is doing for me, okay? Uh, this series that we've been uh, on for these past few weeks uh, is having a major, major impact 
on one of the most important areas in my life that I want transformed, and that's my relationships. Uh, sitting in, what will it feel like when I have the relationship with my children that I desire? What does that feel like? What does it feel like um, when I um, I'm, I have been uh, looking, uh, John, I'm a, a, a widower, um, 40 years ago, it'll be 40 years real soon, uh, that uh, that amazing woman, Karen Silver, um, uh, left this physical plane. Uh, I've been looking for my queen. Um, that's been in my vision statement. That's been in my sitting. And, um, you know, what does that feel like? Um, and, John, I'd love to tell you, man, I met a woman, man. I met a woman. She swept me off my feet. We'll see how that all works out. But I'm sitting in that feeling, what that feels like. And then affirmations. This is where I'm uh, sharing my I am statement. I want to share one of our folks's. And, and I'm I'm so proud of this gentleman, um, Jim Burrow. Um, Jim has been a part. It's been with me for years and years and years on the business side of things. It was very interesting when BDM launched and there is, um, you know, obviously a, a faith based overtone of what we do. And Jim said, look, I'm not the religious guy, you know, I don't know, maybe I need to sit this one out. You know, I'm not into the, all the, the religion. Well, now he's one of the folks in the telegram that's making these amazing, amazing posts. And so I want to share a little uh, of one of the posts that he made that just really inspired me. So Jim, uh, Burrow, you really, really inspired me, my friend. All right. Now, before we get to um, Jim's I am statement, and I want to share Jim's I am statement, or at least a portion of it that he shared in the Telegram room uh, on this week uh, to really incentivize if you have not begun developing your vision statement, your I am statement, that you can then begin uh, uh, to um share aloud, all right, and an affirmation. Uh, what is an affirmation? It is firming that or making firm that which was uh, previously not firm, all right? It, 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 was, it didn't have substance, uh, but we're, we're making it uh, have substance with our words. Uh, I believe that we're all created in the image of the Most High God and that we all have Godness in us. Now, I'm not talking from the religious perspective, all right? Um, and so uh, if you do believe in the creation story of, let's say, Genesis, then the way God created things, if you believe that story, is he spoke things into existence. We get a chance to architect our lives uh, with gratitude, our vision, I am statement, sitting in the feeling of what it feels like uh, when, that, uh, when those uh, items that we have on that statement are accomplished. And then affirming it, calling those things uh, that are not uh, uh, currently manifested as though they already are. Now, everything that we share on Sunday night is designed to help us transform the areas of life that are most important to us. We want to go from that caterpillar to that butterfly, ultimately to that a soaring eagle, where we're soaring above the circumstances, we're soaring above other people's attitudes, we're soaring above what other people uh, uh, have heaped on us in terms of expectations. No, we are the architects of our lives. The reason I chose the uh, bald eagle here is because it has no natural predators. And so uh, whether it's dealing with finances, we want to soar above negative thoughts, or I'll refer to them as intrusive thoughts, uh, thoughts that go against what our vision statements are, thoughts that go against uh, uh, operating from a place of godness. Now, so personal transformation is how we change aspects of who we are. So this is a little review, what we do and the life that we live. Personal transformation, therefore, is an intentional. It doesn't happen by osmosis, all right? It doesn't happen by uh, a happen chance. We have to be very intentional. It's an intentional, conscious commitment 
to getting to the point where we can say, I am who I want to be. I am doing what I want to be doing, and I am living the life that I want to be living. So over the past few weeks, we've been focusing in on vision and developing an I am statement. I want to go real quickly uh, to our guest from last week just to reiterate the importance of using uh, uh, I am. We'll do that in just a moment. So we did an exercise weeks ago. Uh, we got a pad and a pen. We drew a line down the, um, the middle of the page. All right. So if you didn't do this, this is your homework assignment. On the left-hand side, we listed the areas of life that are firing on all cylinders. Those relationships that are just absolutely amazing. Um, let's say, you know, health-wise, you're fit, you're trim, um, you feel good. Fabulous. Put that on the left-hand side if that's your case. Uh, financially. Uh, you know, your your bank account is bulging, is bursting at the seams. Uh, put that uh, on the left-hand side if that's the case, okay? But then on the right-hand side, we listed, we were very honest with ourselves. Nobody was looking over your shoulder. We listed those areas that aren't working or aren't working as well as we would like for them uh, uh, to work. Those are the areas that we want to go to work on. Those are the areas that we want to start to uh, 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 bring into our vision statement, our I am statement. Those are the areas that when we are taking time out to get into silence and get into meditation, uh, that we are actually beginning to feel what is it like when that relationship um, uh, is restored? What is it like when my finances are where I want them to be? Uh, what is it like? Uh, when I meet my queen, uh, my rib, uh, my her, what is that like? What does that feel like? And so here were some categories that we uh, looked at a few weeks ago. And again, this is a little um, um, a little review, okay? Whether it's your spirituality or relationships or health or wellness, basically these are the major categories that make up all of our lives. And so what are those areas that you really want to go to work to, uh, uh, to begin to uh, transform? So we started talking about developing a vision statement, but using that statement and uh, using the words I am for a couple of reasons. One, I believe that when we use the word I am, God in, um, in the Torah, uh, in Exodus, uh, of the of, of the Christian Bible, uh, God um, approaches Moses via a burning bush, and Moses says, "Well, okay, you're telling me to go and and free uh, uh, my people, your people. You know, who should I tell them sent me?" And the translator said that God said, "I am that I am," and that using the word "I am" is for a memorial for all generations. And so I believe that when we say I am, whatever comes after I am, we are calling things into being. Now, whether that is I am tired, in which case, guess what? You're gonna feel tired. Or I am well, I am amazing. I'm an amazing father. Uh, I am prosperous. I am divine health, okay? So I am is present tense also. So I believe that we invoke the presence of God when we use I am. I also believe that it's present tense. So instead of me talking in a futuristic theoretical standpoint, uh, we're using I am as if what we desire is already shown up, already manifested in our now. And when we take time each day to Feel that. So our body, our subconscious, our body begins to feel that. It doesn't know if it is already done or not. And so it's very important that we take time uh, to do uh, feeling. So I want to go back real quickly to a little bit, just about a, maybe a minute or two of uh, one of my mentors from afar, Wayne Dyer, talking about I am. And then we're going to introduce another um, uh, guest on tonight. 
we'll take a look at my buddy Jim Burrow, uh, his I am, and if time allows, we'll even take some time to do uh, um, a guided meditation that John, I love this guided meditation. I would add it to my daily, um, my daily ritual, waking up in the morning before I go to bed, uh, at night. Okay. Let's go to, um, uh, Dr. Dyer. Give us just a moment. We're only going to listen to a, a little bit of Dr. Dyer. I love me some Wayne Dyer, listen to him several hours. I oftentimes go to bed listening to one of his audio books. Here we go. It says, Neville says, and I have this on. Uh, let me make sure. Um, Mari or John, were you able to hear the video? I want to make sure that you can hear the video. Next to my bed, where I live in. Yes, Holland. we can hear it. Take your future yeah, dream. Turn it up just a little bit. By assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So whatever it is that you would like to experience in your life, this, remember, your imagination is yours. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined, okay? Henry David Thoreau had probably the greatest definition of success that I have ever heard. He said, if you advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours it will chase chase after you if you can place into your imagination what it is that you would like to attract and begin to feel it listen to neville this is one of my most favorite quotes from the power of awareness that which you feel yourself to be you are and you are given that which you are. So assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish. And your wish must be realized. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be. Every wow, it must be realized. Again, I just wanted to give you just a little bit of Dr. Dyer. We're going to come back to our special guest in just a few moments. But I wanted to highlight, I wanted to highlight, give us a moment here. Every feeling. Oh, sorry about that. I wanted to highlight uh, one of our folks, and they are taking this very seriously. Um, bear with me. I want to highlight something that Jim Burrow posted this week in our Telegram channel. And it was a little about his, his I am statement. And I thought this would be great for everyone to see that it's not John just saying this. It's not yours truly just saying this. It's not just Mari saying this or even a Wayne Dyer, but folks are starting to uh, utilize these principles. All right. So this is coming from uh, from Jim Burrow. Uh, Jim uh, often, um, almost now on a daily basis, is posting some value-added content into our Telegram room. He says, I am embracing lifelong learning. Now, here's a little backstory about Jim. Um, Jim, I want to say is, is 80 or 80-ish, okay? I'm embracing lifelong learning, Marcia or uh, Marcia. Uh, we'll get to, uh, if you have uh, questions, you can um, put those in your questions box. We won't be opening up for Q&A um, other than um, doing a Q&A from the questions box. I'm embracing lifelong learning. I'm embracing lifelong learning and constantly seeking new knowledge and experiences. I am curious and open-minded. I am curious and open-minded, always eager to explore new ideas and perspectives. Now, this is a gentleman who is 80 years young saying this. I am grateful for my for my mental agility. So this is his I am statement. Uh, Mari, I might need your assistance. Uh, we may have some folks out there looking to troll. There so are definitely some trolls. Um, how do you yeah. want me to handle it? 
Well, that's okay because you know what? If they are if they are actually broadcasting this out, then this this may bless some other folks. So if you would, um, um, anybody uh, right now, you should not be putting your hands up. All right, um, you may if if you have a legitimate question, put those in your Q and A. Uh, if you're a troller, uh, I hope you are broadcasting this out so other people uh, can get this content. Um, so, Mari, if you would just make sure that those hands are uh, put down, I would appreciate it. Okay. So here's this young man, 80 years uh, young or so. I am grateful for my mental agility. I am grateful for my mental agility and the ability to think clearly and creatively. I am engaging in stimulating activities. I am engaging in stimulating activities that challenge my mind and keep it sharp. I'm surrounded by inspiration. Surrounded by inspiration and motivated by the world around me. Now, here's the thing I love about this is that uh, Jim would tell you that he doesn't readily identify with the quote unquote uh, Christian faith. But here he is applying universal laws. I am positive and optimistic. I am positive and optimistic, focusing on the good in every situation and maintaining a youthful spirit. I am connected to my inner child. I am connected to my inner child, embracing playfulness and joy in my daily life. Now, can you imagine if you had an I am statement like this and you read it maybe a couple times a day, two or three times a day, once in the morning, once before you went to bed at night, and you coupled that uh, with uh, um, uh, maybe some, some meditation or what have you, so that you now, uh, as intrusive thoughts uh, come up, you are immediately saying, no, I am uh, connected to my inner child, embracing playfulness and joy in my daily life. I am resilient and adaptable. I am resilient and adaptable, able to navigate life's changes with grace and ease. I am nourishing my mind and body. I'm nourishing my mind and body with healthy habits and positive thoughts. I am celebrating my wisdom and experience. I'm celebrating my wisdom and experience, recognizing the value they bring to my life. Now, look at how powerful that is. Because sometimes we have experiences we don't like those experiences, but those experiences help bring us wisdom and bring value uh, to our lives. Just about finish here. Uh, affirmations for a youthful mind. Here are some affirmations you can use uh, to maintain a youthful and vibrant mind. Again, this is a post, not by yours truly, not by Mari, not by uh, uh, John. This is one of our very own BDMites, okay, Jim Burrow. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for the life I have and the experiences that have shaped me. I'm embracing positivity and focusing on the good in every situation. I am thankful for my health and strength of my body and mind. I am open to new experiences and eager to learn and grow. I am surrounded by... Uh, love and support. I am grateful for the people in my life. Um, I am living in the present moment and appreciating the beauty of now. Jim Burrow, thank you so much, my friend. Um, I read this. It just completely inspired me. And thank you for sharing a part of your I am statement. Now, we're going to go to uh, another very special guest. Um, you know, it's amazing that as I'm starting to really, really, really embrace, embrace and employ so many of the things that John shares, I'm starting to hear some of that um, information from other sources that I had not paid any attention to. But my awareness now has uh, definitely been peaked. So we're going to go um, to this particular gentleman, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and you're going to hear him talk a lot about gratitude as it relates to, um, give me a moment, a lot about gratitude as it relates to, um, he doesn't call it the four pillars, but you'll see that as it relates to manifesting those things that we desire, that gratitude, which is the first of the four pillars uh, that John has begun to teach us, 
is so very important. So give us a moment. Let me make sure that I've got that just right. Here we go. Uh, and many people ask, how do I feel a feeling of an experience that I haven't had yet? Well, think about this. Um, the m number one feeling that we feel when our life begins to change or we begin to have feedback from our environment that what we're doing inside of us is producing an effect outside of us, the most common emotion that we feel is a love for life, a joy for existence, grateful, a real deep sense of gratitude. Now think about the emotional signature of gratitude. The emotional signature of gratitude uh, means that something has already happened. When you receive something, or when you're given something, or you have, are in the process of receiving or have received it, you give thanks. So, the moment you start feeling this emotion of appreciation and thankfulness, you will automatically say, thank you, which means I've just received something, I'm acknowledging that I'm receiving it from you. Most people live their lives waiting for something outside of them to change how they feel inside of them. They're waiting for their new relationship. They're waiting for their new job. They're waiting for their um, uh, new mystical moment uh, to occur before they feel the emotions. So basically, they're spending the majority of their time waiting and not creating, living in lack living in emptiness, living in fear, waiting for that external event to take away their emptiness or pain. That's the Newtonian model of reality of cause and effect. Turns out though, the moment you're feeling that lack, you tend to try harder and force and control and try to predict or manipulate the outer world because you're doing everything you can because you're experiencing a separation or polarity from what you want. You're waiting for it to happen and not creating. When you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, a heart-centered emotion, not the emotions of survival that are anger and hostility and aggression and competition or hatred or uh, envy or jealousy or insecurity or fear or anxiety or pain or suffering or guilt or shame, those, those are derived from the hormones of stress. An elevated emotion is a heart-centered emotion. And a heart-centered emotion lacks polarity. This is the center of oneness. This is the center of wholeness. This is the union of opposites. This is our connection, our bridge to the quantum field. This is where we connect. When you begin to feel a heart-centered emotion, what you're doing is you're falling in love with your life. So your body is your unconscious mind. It does not know the difference between an experience that creates an emotion and an emotion that you're creating by thought alone. Your body is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment. Now think about this. The latest research on genes says the environment signals the gene. Well, the end product of an experience in the environment is called an emotion. So when you begin to embrace the emotion of head, ahead of the actual experience, you're signaling the gene ahead of the environment. And now you're beginning to instruct and select new genes that make new proteins. And proteins are responsible for the structure and function of your body. So you're literally becoming your dream. You're literally becoming it. So when you feel that emotion, you tend to be less interested in looking around outside of you of how it's going to happen. If you're walking around conditioning your body every day to feel that emotion that you're in love with yourself and you're in love with life and you're worthy to receive and you're open and you're inspired and you're optimistic and you're enthusiastic and you're feeling that emotion, you feel like your future has already happened. So you're less likely to feel lack or separation. Once energy makes it to the center and you feel gratitude, that center begins to produce a measurable magnetic field. That's a frequency, that's energy, and all frequency carries information. So now you can lay the thought of your new relationship on that frequency, and now you're broadcasting a whole new electromagnetic signature into the field. 
So then the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're calling your future to you. When this center is opened up, you're connected to the quantum field. So now you don't have to go anywhere to get it, to try to force it or control it or predict it. In fact, you're the magnet. You're collapsing time and space, and the event is being drawn to you, and it comes in synchronicities and serendipities and coincidences, opportunities. Now, the antithesis is also true. The moment you feel angry because you're in traffic, the moment you judge your coworker because all of a sudden they push an emotional button, the moment you feel sorry for yourself, victimized or self-pity, you're now emitting a different energy. In fact, you're back to the energy of your past and you just disconnected from your future. So then people's dreams stay at arm's length from them. So people ask me all the time, well, how come my new relationship hasn't happened? And I tell them the same thing. Take out a piece of paper and write down everything you want in a new relationship and then become that person. Because <laughs> the question fundamentally is, would you go out with you? So if the answer is you're starting to love yourself so much that you no longer need another person, or you're no longer in lack, then you magnetize an equal. It just happens as a side effect. And it doesn't happen in ways that you can predict. It happens in different ways. So, the emotions of gratitude, appreciation, thankfulness, a love for life, a joy for existence, worthy to receive, inspired and enthusiastic to be alive, um, looking forward and in excitement and anticipation to the unknown, staying in that energy without analyzing, uh, that's the energy that allows the unknown to begin to occur. So what you're doing is you're teaching your body emotionally what that future feels like. And when you're in a state of gratitude, you're in the perfect state to receive the fruits of your efforts. Awesome. And so, ladies and gentlemen, how about we, we end with this guided meditation? Welcome to this Billion Dollar Mind Meditation Session, where we will take a few... So what I want everyone to do is I want you to get, I want you to get uh, in a place, uh, maybe sitting upright. I want you to fix in your mind that one area, or maybe it's two, that you really want to see transformation. It could be in your health, it could be in your finances, it could be in relationships, that one, maybe two areas. And we're going to have John lead us through uh, at least a portion, if not all, of this guided meditation. This is what uh, Dr. Dispenza was just talking about, sitting in the feeling. Uh, John's going to lead us in, into gratitude is going to lead us on this guided meditation. If you're not using this meditation on a daily basis, I strongly, strongly encourage you to do so. When we first started this series of sharing, I don't know, about a month or so ago, all right, I, I wanted to see a restoration relationship with uh, one of my sons. Um, an hour and a half after doing this uh, guided meditation, that son who I had not really I had much conversation with uh, in months got in touch with me. Pop, I'm ready to have a conversation with you. Let you know, you know, what's been going on with me. Last weekend, that same son uh, came and spent uh, the weekend with me. Uh, and now that same son, um, he and I, along with my uh, my other son, we now have a a, a weekly date, a weekly phone date where we're getting on the phone. Uh, this last week, I think we talked for about an hour and a half, uh, the three of us. That was not the case four weeks ago. But I started sitting in the emotion um, um, with this guided meditation. All right, so we're going to end tonight with this guided meditation, at least a portion of it. And I'm going to be right here with you as we go through this meditation. Get that one or two uh, things in your mind that you really want to transform. And let uh, John guide us in this meditation. A few minutes to practice the principles of faith. Now find a comfortable position where you can relax. 
but don't get so relaxed that you fall asleep. If you find yourself falling asleep, you may want to sit up straight. Now take a deep breath. And as you exhale, say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to exercise faith. Take another deep breath. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to exercise faith. And another deep breath. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to exercise faith. Thank you, Lord, for our billion dollar mastermind community where I can meet with other like-minded people to learn and practice principles of faith. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that dwells inside of me. Thank you for guiding my life and leading me to this group. Thank you for reminding me to always remain in gratitude. And thank you for reminding me that all things work for good to those who love the Lord. The scripture says that love is a gift from God. So Lord, fill my mind and my heart with a deep and abiding love for you and for all of mankind. Help me, Lord, to hear your voice more clearly so that I may know and do your will. Now take another minute to offer gratitude for whatever comes to your mind. Thank you, Lord. Now take another deep breath, and as you exhale, feel yourself going to a deeper level of relaxation. Your goal should be to relax deeply enough that you can make contact with your heart center. All things we experience are created by the heart, and once you succeed in changing your feelings, things you desire will begin to show up. Any resistance you once felt will begin to disappear and you will feel like you are in a stream that flows with abundance. Now take another deep breath and relax even further. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your head. You may feel a warm tingling sensation caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and relax even more as you let all tensions go from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyes and your eyelids. You will detect a warm tingling sensation or vibration caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and release all tensions from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, concentrate your sense of awareness on the skin covering your face and cheeks you will detect a warm tingling sensation or vibration caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and release all tension from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, Concentrate your sense of awareness on your chest and abdomen. You will detect a warm tingling sensation or vibration caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and release all tensions from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, concentrate your sense of awareness on your arms and your hands. You will detect a warm 
tingling sensation of vibration caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and release all tensions from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, concentrate your sense of awareness on your feet and your toes. You will detect a warm tingling sensation or vibration caused by circulation. Now take another deep breath and release all tensions from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. You are now at a place where you can mold your feelings and begin to create whatever your heart desires. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, become aware of the feeling of gratitude. Each time you do this meditation, you will feel your gratitude growing stronger and stronger. You will begin to realize more and more how all of the experiences of your life are working for your good, and you will find yourself worrying less about the pressures of life. Mentally say, Thank you for this opportunity to exercise faith. Now take another deep breath and as you exhale, visualize one thing that would have the greatest positive impact upon your life. What does it look like? How will you look and feel when it appears? Make an image of whatever it is and place it on a large mental screen that is slightly above eye level. Make it so you have to look up slightly to see this screen and the image you are projecting on it. Now take another deep breath and make the image brighter. Now take another deep breath and as you exhale, imagine the feeling you would have if the thing you desire was now. How would you feel if right now you were in possession of the thing you desire. Can you feel that? Can you feel that vibration and frequency in the center of your being? Now mentally say, so let it be done. Thank you, Lord, for giving me whatsoever I ask for in faith believing. Remember to daily practice these principles. In all things be thankful, and especially for challenges that give you an opportunity to exercise faith. Write your vision and make it plain, and throughout the day, visualize one thing that, that you want to change or have that will make the most impact on your life. Then surround yourself with the feeling of already having the thing you desire. Finally, affirm that it is done. Speak to it as though it already is. Also, use your awareness to constantly monitor your thoughts and feelings. You must not allow yourself to be double-minded or the future you are building will not stand. Whenever you start to feel dragged down or your thoughts wander to the pressures of life, you must be aware of them in order to stop them. Simply ask, where does this thought come from? And ask if this thought or feeling resonates with the person you want to be or the thing that you want to have. If not, mentally let them go. Imagine holding a cork under the water and feel the resistance as it tries to break free and rise to the surface and go with the flow of the stream. When dark thoughts and feelings arise, mentally let the cork go and watch those thoughts and feelings quickly disappear. By doing this, you become the cork. You will quickly rise above your negative thoughts and feelings and you will soon find yourself flowing without resistance in a stream of abundance and prosperity 
that you have never known before. Now we're going to take a little trip. You are going to visit your future self. And okay, folks, I tell you what, that is, who else other than me? Gosh, that's so relaxing. And I'm still feeling, still feeling that. My body's still feeling those emotions of my desires fulfilled. Thank you so much, John, for that. Um, I'm going to uh, be posting all the links that we've used tonight uh, in the uh, the Q and A um, in just a few moments here. Um, so uh, let's do this. Um, we are officially. Well, I tell you, before we officially end, um, those of you who are visiting with us. I want you to get back to the person who referred you to tonight's uh, sharing. Find out more about our um, financial model. We'll be discussing that on Tuesday night uh, in part and in full on Thursday night. I'm also going to post a couple of links for those of you that say, I don't want to wait to Tuesday or Thursday to, to find out more about the uh, financial model. Uh, it's interesting that I shared uh, Jim Burroughs, a par part of his I am statement uh, earlier. Jim is, again, I believe he's the ripe young age of about 80-ish or so. Uh, well, Jim just had a person that um, he referred on the um, the business side of what we do uh, with Billion Dollar Mind. And that one referral, that one referral um, helped Jim generate over three thousand dollars in payouts i think it was 3200 and some change or so uh no 3600 excuse me 3600 and some change in payouts so very interesting i don't know if jim's i am statement um uh, has anything to do with finances or anything like that i only took a portion of what uh he shared in the uh, um in the telegram room but isn't it interesting that here's a a, a person that's starting to put things into play and very recently again um just with one of his referrals um participating in our um model that generated for jim 3600 uh plus in payout so congratulations to you jim uh before we go to q a uh john would you like to come on and and share anything with the beautiful people out here yeah i would thank you Imagine how your life would have been shaped if the things you heard tonight had been taught to you by your parents and your teachers and your pastors. We can't go back in time, but we can each start today and have an impact on future generations. Can you feel a ripple effect that is beginning to emanate out into the world, ch changing lives that will in turn share more love more kindness and truth with those they have influence over. If my vision of 40 years ago comes to pass, we are going to change the world in a positive way. We have no idea how sharing with just one person can make a huge difference in your life and the lives of others. Now, one of our members, Roger Pepin, needs our faith and our financial support. In your meditations, I would ask you to please think of Roger and surround yourself with a feeling of him already being healed. And the way this works, folks, <clears throat> I've told the story about the lady who had inoperable bladder cancer. She, they couldn't operate, so she went to this clinic in China where they, they do faith healing. And they assigned three people to uh, assist her. One was a, a person who ran a, uh, a sonogram and she took a photo of the, a, a still photo of the tumor and posted it to the left side of the uh, computer monitor or some kind of monitor and took a picture, a, a live feed of the tumor and posted it right alongside. And the other two, the faith healers, they were trained to surround themselves with the feeling of the person that they were, were working with as already being healed. Mm. They were 
imagining and feeling that this person, whoever it may be, was already being healed or was already healed. And they were chanting a word in Chinese, which we might translate to it is done or it is finished, it's complete. And in a matter of, um, I think it was a minute and 45 seconds or two minutes and 45 seconds, I forget exactly, but it was, I know it was less than three minutes because I actually watched the video of this and you can see the tumor on the right hand side just literally shrink and disappear. Wow. Wow. So we have an effect. We are all connected. All of God's children, we are all connected. And, and God has given us a dominion over all of the things of this earth, including the photons of light that make up somebody's tumor. So literally what happens is through faith, the tumor just goes back, the photons go back into random orbit as if no tumor had ever existed. In other words, we have nothing left, no, no residue, nothing that can be measured. It just literally disappears. Mm -hmm. So if we could all do that, if we could surround ourselves with a feeling of Roger being healed. Mm. It is done. It, it is, is done. finished. It is complete. And if you would continue to do that in your meditations, I would appreciate it. He would appreciate it. So would his family. I will also post a GoFundMe for Roger. And if you're able to donate something to help him out, his family would greatly appreciate that. Like all of our donations, there is no promise of expectation of return. That's what makes Billion Dollar Mind different from the other donation platforms out there. However, there are some eternal laws, some universal laws that come into play when we help others. You know, we can walk around stooped over with the weight of the world on our back, going it alone. Or we can work together like they did in the mastermind group that Napoleon Hill tells about us in his uh, classic book, Think and Grow Rich, where everyone in that group was lifted up because of the ideas, the advice, and the financial support of each other. You know, we call it synergy. I call it God doing the heavy lifting. So if you can imagine now a person with his arms outstretched, holding the world, but then we see the hands of God lifting most of that weight. That's God doing the heavy lifting. That's synergy, what we call synergy. So when you hitch two horses together that can each pull a thousand pounds together, they can pull three to 5,000 pounds. That's God doing the heavy lifting. Somebody, some power, some unseen power is pulling that extra weight because one plus one, we always thought equals two. But that's not the case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we work together. Mm -hmm. When we work together, one plus one equals three or four or five. So again, I'll, I'll post a GoFundMe there. If you can donate whatever, whatever little bit of, a, amount you can, it's going to be a blessing not only to Roger and his family, but it will in turn be a blessing to you because God keeps a perfect accounting. Nothing ever gets lost. Back to you. Wow. Um, thank you so much, John. And um, so um, let's, let's end with this. How about we, we have a prayer of, of safety and protection, and we'll call out Roger and his family's uh, name as well. 
Um, Father, we're just grateful. We stand in gratitude. Pillar number one, great attitude. Gratitude for your loving kindness, your mercy. You allowed us to wake up and see another day. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of people went to bed last night and a bunch of those folks didn't get up this morning. And others got up this morning, Father, but they've they've had some type of tragedy. Either they were lost or they lost loved ones or something tragic happened. But we're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful for your goodness and your mercy. And we send Roger and his family love and peace and healing. We thank you for uh, anyone that may be um, participating in his care, that they will have wisdom well beyond their training, well beyond their years, well beyond their schooling. And anyone else, Father, that's dealing with issues in their body or issues in their finances or issues in their um, relationships, Father, we pray that the messaging that is coming forth, that we'll take it to heart, we'll begin to apply these eternal truths, these universal laws, your word. And we are just grateful. We pray a prayer of, of safety and protection uh, over everyone on this Zoom, over our loved ones, those people, those things that concern us. We thank you for an amazing, amazing, amazing week. And we even thank you uh, for those folks um, that show up to be teachers, um, to help us understand where we are. Uh, I didn't quite pass that test, but I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not going to put myself in judgment. I'm just going to look to get a little better every single day. With every single passing day, let me get a little better, a little better, a little better as I'm transforming those areas that are most important to me. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the power and the glory forever. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in your q and I've posted all the links that we covered tonight from Dr. Dyer, the I am uh, portion, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, uh, John's uh, guided meditation. We did not complete the uh, guided meditation. There was uh, uh, another part of that meditation that is so, so key. So that's there, as well as those of you that want to find out more about the business side of what we do. Uh, we've posted two modules there. If you just go into your, your Q&A and give me a moment. Let's see. How do I post in the chat? I'm not seeing a chat on my... Um, you do you see the Q and A instead of saying chat? I do, yeah. Okay, Chris, I'm sending you love, <laughs> my friend. Sending you love, my friend. Yeah, love and peace. Yeah, we love you, Christopher. Did you see it, John? You too. Oh, okay, you too, so Marcia. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not finding where to post. Hang okay, on one so second. so uh, so John, do this. If you will go to where it says answered, uh -huh. uh, Jan and Rada um, had a question, and I, I I think Mari maybe already answered it. But if you go there, you should be able to click. At, you should see a button that says type answer at the bottom. Okay. Of that. All right. There you go. Okay. There's uh yeah. There's the go. Wait, 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 what? There we go. Yeah, there's the GoFundMe for Roger. Yeah. If any of you, have, you would like to give their family some support. Fantastic. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that is in your Q&A. You'll see the links that uh, you truly posted earlier, and you'll see what John just posted for Roger and his family. Um, John, will you also post that in the Telegram? Uh, yeah, I will. Okay. All right. So John will also post that in the Telegram. All right. Amazing folks. We love each and every one of you. Uh, let's transform the world together, starting with yours. Everyone have a phenomenal week.
Good night, everyone. Thank you, Professor. Awesome job. Thank awesome you, sir. job. Thank you, sir. <laughs>